I'm not enabling undo. That was from a bulking phase. At some point, maybe naturally, I'll just make that face during a, a cutting phase, and then we'll, we'll add undo. You might have to wait a while, though. So, sorry for being late today. I should also let you know that at any point in the next 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, I will probably receive a delivery that I have to um, take in, which will disrupt the stream for maybe like five minutes. I didn't book the delivery for this time. It was uh, foisted upon me, but it is what it is. Because this is when the... When I work is when all the other motherfuckers work. One of us has to change, and it's not going to be me. Some of these motherfuckers need to work two to seven. Listen, no disrespect. I know 70% of you are not having kids anyway. By choice. You guys should take the two to 10 p.m. shifts. We got daycare drop-off. You, you know, you got school. You got other stuff. That, I mean, as the child gets older, I'm trying to say here. But we got a lot of... The morning belongs to the young and those who have young kids and the elderly for some reason. I guess because like after you've spent 45 years getting up at like 6 a.m. so you can get to work by 8.30, when you're retired, you're like, I got to make the most of this. So you wake up at 6.30 forever. Why do parents always put their decision to have kids on the backs of everyone else? Me at age 22, trying to watch One Piece on an airplane when a child uh, sneezes one time. There should be an airline that's just for kids only. <clears throat> and also there should be an airline that's just for old people only. And then there should be an airline that, and tickets should be 50% um, cheaper. And there should be an airline that's just for people that are watching One Piece. I don't want the person in front of me to be watching something. And then I'm watching it through the crack in the seat. And they're watching Extraction, but I haven't seen Extraction yet. I've only seen Extraction 2. There should be, there should be a lot more investment in public transit. But I should never have to share it with anybody who I am annoyed to see in public. Fuck you! <laughs> I made up 98% of that shit right there! And it felt incredible. And I'll do it again. That felt incredible. I haven't shouted in like 72 hours. 72 hours of my kid being like, Daddy, come play with me. And I'm like, okay. I'm Daddy Pig. I'm Daddy Pig. No, not like that. What do you mean not like that? You're not Daddy Pig. You're George Pig. Okay, I'm George Pig. Dinosaur. Rawr. No, George Pig doesn't say dinosaur. Oh, really? George Pig doesn't say dinosaur? I've seen every episode of Peppa Pig about six times. All that motherfucker says is dinosaur. But whatever you say... Actually, in season one, George kind of talks a little bit, but I think they did like some uh, focus groups and they found out that people like George more when he just says dinosaur. So season two onwards, he just says dinosaur. <clears throat> Here we go. I followed this Dan Giesling guy because of you. Then today he says he hates Hades because of its art style. Take responsibility for me wasting a click on the unfollow button. Dan's take on Hades is definitely one of the worst takes that he has in gaming. I don't even get it, honestly. <laughs> the, like, he thinks Hades looks bad. He also, whenever, how you know you're about to see a 6 out of 10 roguelite is if Dan's stream title is like, Best roguelite of the year, question mark. His, just, his, his tastes are not aligned with the masses. And that's with respect to, like, many things. Like, he also... I think he gave Rise of Skywalker a 10 out of 10. He gave Prometheus an 8. Like, he's got lots of... He's got lots of tastes that are just out of the pocket. But I respect it because they're genuine. I don't think that he's trolling with his movie tastes. I think that he's, that genuinely, he's just like, his crosshair is not pointing at what everyone else's crosshair is pointing at. I mean, he, he tweets, he's, he's a firebrand. That's his thing. The fact that he tweeted, why didn't anybody tell me butter on toast is good? Like, that's just an insane tweet. There's no reason to even reply to it. Like, I would never, if I was on Family Feud, I would never invite Daniel to be part of my five. Because you just can't trust that he's got his finger on the pulse of society. Imagine it was like, you know, we asked 100 people, top five answers on the board, name something you put on toast. 
and you're scre he's the team captain, you're screaming, butter, 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 butter. Hey, everybody on the team saying butter, what are you going to go with? Mm, I'm going to say uh, nothing. And then the other squad is just like, yeah, we're going to say butter, Steve. I think you're not wrong. If you need that, like the one that two out of 100 people say, and then as soon as it leaves the person's mouth, you're like, there's no way that they're going to... Uh, that's going to be on the board, and then it dings up on the board, you'd be like, okay, I guess. Sprinkles. You're in the Family Feud TikTok algorithm as well. Macros, I don't go on TikTok. The only time I see TikTok, well, actually, I posted a TikTok this weekend for the sponsored thing, but my TikTok is just a graveyard of me posting sponsored stuff. Every time that I have to post a sponsored TikTok, I have to like go recover my password and then like figure out, oh, I accidentally rendered it in 1920 by 1080 instead of 1080 by 1920. Like it's just, you know, when you, you followed someone on Twitter like seven years ago and they've never tweeted, but then like once every three months, they're like today's stream is sponsored by Factor. That's what my TikTok is like. And that's OK. This, it, it is what it is. Also, when I went, I went to TikTok on web to post the, um, the sponsored TikTok. While the video was uploading, it was playing like a TikTok in the background. And it, I swear to you, this was the only TikTok that has been served to me in like a year and a half. It was like a 19-year-old guy and his girlfriend. And he's like, I, guys, I bought this sunset lamp that makes my room look like it's a sunset. And I'm getting unlimited kisses. And then she's like, you're not going to get a kiss. And he's like, watch me. And then he like tongue kisses her on the mouth. And he's like, see, I told you guys, I get kisses on TikTok live whenever I want. By the way, if you want to buy this sunset lamp, there's a link in the description. And I was like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what is this? Like brain worm content that's out here. Robert Kennedy Jr., 69-year-old, roided up man, bench pressing 75 pounds for four reps. I'm losing my fucking mind. Is anybody still paying attention? Working out in his damn dockers? Anyway. Oh, man. Bro did 115 for eight reps. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's like almost 70 years old, but I was like, I've never seen the, the bar look that long. It's like the, the plates were so small, it made the bar look so fucking long. So I'm, I'm like half stalling, because this delivery is supposed to be here. But here's the way that this shit works in my brain. If I um, start doing something, the delivery is going to show up in three seconds. Or even worse, it'll show up like 15 minutes into a slash marker. If I don't start it, they're, they're never going to come. I'm going to get a message from my wife in like an hour and a half that's like, oh yeah, they called me um, two hours ago. And also, uh, they said they can't come today. So I guess we might as well get it going here. I didn't know what to play today. And then a new uh, Kingdom came out. Now, I skipped Kingdom 1. The reason I skipped Kingdom 1 is because my manager, David Miyazaki, is the chief fun executor at um, Raw Fury. So I was like, maybe that's a little bit of a conflict of interest. Now watch my ass um, as Kingdom becomes like a, a global phenomenon that lasts for multiple years. I'm missing out on it. My wife played 300 hours of it or something like that. So now my ass said, I don't care. Plus, Raw Fury keeps making bangers. Friends v. Friends, for example. So I'm going to play some Kingdom 80s. And I'll, I'll probably be like... Oh, you can't hear it, but it's really loud. Now you can hear it. I'll probably be like straight ass at it for a while, but that's okay. It's not that loud. Just fucking relax. Just chill out, okay? It's not that loud. Oh, hang on. I think they're here. Oh, perfect timing. I'll be right back. It doesn't take that long to get a package. Yeah, it was 60 packages. I'm not being facetious. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me text my wife. It is not merch. You think it would take me that long to move 55 t-shirts? 
You could hold 55 of them at the same time. Like, what does a t-shirt weigh? Like, two ounces? It would, actually, because you're a total nacho husband. I do... There's got to be three more horsemen of the... Uh, I, I hate to use this term because I find people that use this term on uh, Twitter to be insanely annoying. But there have to be like four fail son horsemen of the apocalypse. Right now, I've only got Nacho Husband. I don't know if there's three other like appropriate parts of the political compass. And then I could say like, choose your fighter. I know there's like what? Nacho Husband, uh, Bean Dad. Yeah, Bean Dad is definitely one. Peach mom. Yeah, but I'd like it to all be men because I already get accused of being a misogynist. <laughs> Peach mom was definitely in the wrong. That's for sure. Who was Peach mom? She drew, drew that comic that was like me seeing the last peach. Oh, I'll save this because maybe my kid will want to eat it. And then like her husband seeing the peach. Ooh, yummy peach. And he ate it. And then it's like, oh, her husband's like a bad guy because he ate fruit that he bought. Wasn't the whole thing about how she couldn't martyr herself over a piece of fruit? Twitter went nuts because they can't read good? I don't know. I just saw the Twitter reaction to it. There was also the one that was like my husband when he leaves the house with the kids and it's like he's just taking his car keys. And then like the wife when she takes her kids and she's got like a backpack with like 17 granola bars in it and four water bottles hand sanitizer wet wipes napkins fucking you know uh adrenaline shots narcan you know i gotta tell you i've i've carried the 55 burgers 55 french fries so true i've i've been both sides of that coin taking my kid out very routinely I will take my kid out with like, um, not even like a water bottle, just like the shit in my pocket. Why? Because she's go picking up a uh, hundred thousand rocks. Her hands are full. I don't want my back to get sore. And then like, she just doesn't need it. She needs water. I'll, I'll get her some water. We'll stop at a water fountain. I'll buy a bottle of water or apple juice or something at a grocery store. She you know, gets her hands dirty, will go to a bathroom and wash her hands. She uh, poops herself. I'll change her diaper. Like it's no, it's no, well, I guess I would carry a diaper with me in that case. Well, either way, I'm just saying, I think that, I think people overcomplicate the, the diaper bag just a little bit. I think if you know you're going to eat, you should take a bib, wet wipes and diapers. And that's all you need. But in our diaper bag, I don't know, we've got... Um, a folding uh, mat that we can use to put her on to change her diaper. Brother, you could just... They, they all got the thing that John Mulaney said he was snorting coke off in the gas station bathrooms. Every bathroom has one of those these days. You need a fanny pack. That's about it. Who's the fourth horseman? Sorry, I know you're trying to make a bit. I don't know. I don't know who the fourth horseman is. I don't think it's Submarine Dad, just because we don't know enough about him. All we know is he went on the submarine. Which is definitely like a point in the negative dimension, but New Balance Dad? New Balance Dad is just a guy wearing shoes. He didn't do anything. It's literally just a guy. What about um, <laughs> uh, Balloon Boy's dad? Or is that too old? Do people still remember Balloon Boy? It's been 30 minutes. Talia, I got a 10 minute delivery in the middle! I just played 10 hours of Final Fantasy 16 over the last two streams. We've, we've, we've had some gaming at our, at our own expense. It's the rebirth of uh, myself as a gamer. I've been playing RPGs, and now I'm playing a strategy game. Now, I, Kingdom 80s is a pseudo-sequel, spiritual successor, direct successor, direct predecessor. Can you have a direct predecessor? Um, to Kingdom, New Lands, and Kingdom, which are two strategy games that came out 2016 and I want to say like 2017 or 2018. In those games, you uh, are the king of the castle. You ride your horse from left to right. You kill monsters in the, or you build defenses in the daytime that defend your kingdom from monsters in the nighttime. 
And eventually, if you're me, they overrun your kingdom and then you lose and then you restart and you try to get a little better next time. This is that, but with kind of a Far Cry Blood Dragon veneer of like, check it out, instead of being fantasy, now it's uh, every Gen X's fantasy, which is reliving their childhood in the 1980s. Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, Walkmen, uh, Nike shoes, that uh, you, you hoverboards, the, hey, McFly, those things don't work on water, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I'm eager to give it a try. I didn't play much Kingdom, so I'll probably be horrendous here. But what I liked about Kingdom, and I told one of the developers this at PAX when I first saw Kingdom, is that I feel like an idiot in real-time strategy games, but this is a real-time strategy game with like minimalist design that instead of like, oh, do I really want to upgrade my fire bats to have sticky napalm, which causes extra damage over time but lowers their armor, instead, every choice is more like, hey, do you want to spend two gold to make, like, your wall stronger? And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a little bit more minimalistic, okay? 80s is a unique kingdom experience. We recommend normal difficulty for people new to the series. That's, that's good for me. Me when I'm Will Byers. Me when I'm Dustin. Me when I'm Mike. Me when I'm Eleven. Me when I'm the Demogorgon. Me when I'm... Officer Hopper. Me when I'm Steve Harrington. I know way more Stranger Things characters than I thought. See, that's... He's got heavy Dustin energy for sure. Akira Slide. I haven't gotten to that season yet. I haven't met Akira Slide. Okay, hold to set up camp. Three coins to set up camp. Then stand here. Recruit two kids. Tap to drop coins. Stand here. Archers defend the walls and hunt for coins. Hold to buy a bow. There's two for you. Then we go this way. Workers build walls and chop trees for coins. Hold to buy a hammer. Wait for a kid to pick up the hammer. Okay, kids are workers. One of them has become an archer. One of them has become a, a hammer bro. Quick swig of the red Gatorade. Yeah, of course you think that. You're a beginner Gatorade drinker. You just had some basic flavors such as red, and now you're convinced that it's the best flavor you'll ever have. It's the same way you'll feel in a month from now when you finally have orange. Who likes orange? I like orange. Isn't orange the default Gatorade? Dude, there was nothing like at um, like a childhood baseball tournament when some... I don't even know how to describe the drink, but when someone and their parents would show up with one of those like orange coolers with the little plastic spout on the bottom. And I don't even know what that dispensed. It was like not quite juice. It was not quite... Uh, soda. It was not quite Gatorade. It was like an electrolyte slurry or something like that. It n you couldn't get it anywhere else. They only sold it in those plastic jugs. Two people in the middle of stream fighting about sap is peak I can't energy. You're not wrong. I'll tell you that much. You're not wrong. I've been seeing an argument about is or isn't sap the new Isaac. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Waited all weekends mad that I was 20 minutes late just so you could argue about a free-to-play game on the Android telephone? Who's arguing? You're right, that's a great impression of uh, what people who love to argue say. People who argue all the time be like, I'm not arguing, I'm just saying. Well, like, it wouldn't be an argument if they would just listen to me. Hang on, you, go, go, go the other way! Bro, this deer, he has a bad survival instinct. He's corrupted. He's corrupt. There you go, go back this way. A 16-ounce latte is kind of funny. Hey, please give me a pint of warm milk. Why are you 90s posting about coffee? You're like trying to get one over on people who are like, they think they're fancy, so they go to Starbucks. You're like, I don't go to Starbucks. I drink like uh, black tar coffee out of a carafe from a gas station in a styrofoam cup that I then eat when I'm finished. Like, why are you... Latte? The hell is a latte? Can I get a medium coffee? Capoetto? Why are you why are you Andrew Dice Clay posting? 
I'm not a latte guy, but I mean, a latte is not like a snobby coffee. A snobby coffee went from like, oh, the milk has foam in it to like, oh, are these like single origin beans from the Andes? Coffee Andes. Canadian wildfires really messing with my smoke today. America, when there's a crisis in America, we're all in this together. America, when they're affected by a crisis elsewhere. Hey, Canada, could you get it under control with the fires over there? <laughs> so true. <laughs> Note to self, when, when you're in desperate need of some plus twos, you could take a, you could tell a joke at America's expense. They can take it. California figures it out every year? Like, not really. Like, the Hollywood Hills are on fire and people in Los Angeles have to evacuate. I'm sure the smoke goes down to Mexico. You're just not on, like, Mexican Twitter. Did you see the GameStop movie trailer? Let me stop you right there, brother. There's a negative 100% chance I'm going to watch that. Let me guess, it's made by Netflix. Or even worse, it's not made by Netflix. Paul Dano's in it? For how long? He's the main character. He plays, uh... Deep Value Kitty, whatever his name was. <laughs> Who the hell is Paul Dano? No, 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 no! That's Paul Dano. What is no, 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 no? It's from uh, the Batman. It's uh, nine hours into the Batman, approximately at the halfway point. Take forever with the chop. Your only job is chopping trees. What if I just gave you a steel chainsaw? And now the type of guy to clap when he reads the McDonald's child labor story? What was the McDonald's child labor story? McDonald's be using child labor? Yeah, obviously, like it's everybody's first job. Okay, now let's go see if we got enough uh, soldiers. Chat was pretty okay with the child labor. Let's see how they are about child soldiers. I'm as long as I see kids, I'm recruiting them. What's funny now is they're like running away from me. <laughs> you would you're not running away from me, kid. I'm gonna recruit you. Here's a free Xbox. Here's a, a good financing rate on a 2024 Dodge Charger. Don't chop the trees around the kids spawn. This is one where I'm gonna trust the developer that they tutorialize the game that they made better than Twitch chat. The one exception is my wife, because I know she's played a lot of this. And I'm married to her, so I have to face the consequences of what I say during the stream. <laughs> Unlike chat, where I'd, that if you go, hey, why'd you say that messed up stuff on stream? I just block you on Twitter. Van Halen, Atari, and Child Labor, the 80s ruled. Bruce Springsteen, Madonna, way, be way before Nirvana. There was U2 and Blondie, Music still on MTV, her two kids in high school tell her that she's not cool, but she's still preoccupied with 19, with 19, with 1985, am I right? Now that's what I call 80s, get your six disc collection today. That used to be how 50% of music was sold in this country. Infomercials that only aired at 1am. Featuring the top 100 love songs of all time. Love lift us up where we belong. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to, you know, you guys ever watch television? Sorry, I got a G-chat message. This is a true story. Um, one of my friends is Indian and he's getting married in September. So there's like two ceremonies. I mean, there's like a hundred ceremonies, but there's like two genres. One of them is the Indian wedding, which is multiple days of like celebrations and feasting and stuff like that. And one of them is the like American style wedding where, I mean, you, you know what a wedding is. I'm not going to waste your time. Okay, Steve, let's pull this back just a little bit here. Um, so in the group chat, he's trying to tell everyone how they can get some Indian clothes for the Indian part of the wedding and then everyone else is trying to figure out how to do it without uh, getting cancelled if the photos get out. That's pretty much what's happening. How are you gonna dress? 
I'm not going. It's very close to my uh, daughter's birthday, and it's in another country, and also like the entire width of the country away. Cop out. <laughs> it's my kid's birthday. <laughs> Are you sending money? The invitation... Li listen, I haven't been invited to that many weddings. Most of my friends are like... Um, millennials like Twitch chat. They might be... They've, they've been dating for like 17 years, but they're never going to get married. Um, which is, you know, who cares? Either way, I haven't received that many wedding invitations. This one said... Um, we would prefer not to receive like... Gifts that are possessions or something like that. And I was like, I see you. <laughs> I can read between the lines on that one. That one, it says, don't buy us an air fryer. Please just give us money. In Poland, we always just give money. Honestly, I mean, I think it's a, a great uh, idea. Like, I would, I would definitely rather get money than like a, a Cuisinart food processor or something like that. Because money could buy anything. It could even buy a... Cuisinart food processor. You don't call it Cuisinart? What do you say? Cuisine art? You gotta watch a commercial sometime. It's not it's not cuisine art. It's Cuisinart. We're expanding like crazy. Rip to the right side? Honestly, I'm sure the right side is fine because there's like 10,000 child soldiers there holding down the fort. If anything, you should, if the Roman Empire is falling, you shouldn't worry about Rome. Your ass should be worried about Gaul. Anything close to, you know, where the politicians live is going to be the last thing to fall, brother. You should be worried about the frontier. Spoilers. <laughs> the One Piece. I, again, I feel like, um, oh, it's sorry, no attacks today? I feel like uh, I'm living in a different world than what the Twitter algorithm thinks I'm living in. A new bicycle! But I'm getting, like, a lot of tweets in my Twitter For You page right now. That are people saying, like, the Netflix One Piece show is going to be awesome because they're spending $18 million an episode on it. And I really just want to hit them with the, like, the first time image. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> How much did the Lord of the Rings show cost? Oh, I was like $100 billion an episode or something. Something reasonable. Still waiting on season three of Raised by Wolves. Ridley Scott? What, I'm thinking of, uh, like, Leonard Nimoy from the monorail, monorail episode of um, The Simpsons. Ridley Scott directing a pilot for a sci-fi show, building a bunch of mysteries that he doesn't then have to solve. Well, my work here is done. Well, wait, you didn't do anything. Didn't I, showrunner? Didn't I? Wait, Rings of Power is bad? I was going to get around to watching it. I don't know. Like, listen, I'm I'm not like a the good judge of what television shows you should watch because I just don't watch many these days. But I watched the first episode and was like not into it. But I was like, maybe it just starts slow. And then I watched like half of the second episode and I was like, I don't like it at all. I did pretty much exactly the same thing with the Witcher show as well. So that will either embolden you to agree with my take, or you will disagree with my take because you love The Witcher show, which is also fine. Because who cares? If you're an 80s kid, does that make you roughly 50? Um, well, it depends. Like, uh, listen, I, I get the insinuation and the joke, and I'm just not willing to let you have it. Um, I consider myself more of a 90s kid than a 2000s kid. I was born in 1988, so I was really like, I mean, I was not an adult for any of the 90s. But that's, I feel like when that's a lot of the, a lot of my personality was baked in that period. And then the, the 2000s, definitely, a, a, you know, a lot of formative years as well. But the baking process started in the 90s. I mean, you're really asking like when a cake becomes cake. Does it become cake when you mix the flour and the eggs? Because that was in the 80s. Does it become cake when you pour it into the pan? Because that was like in the 90s. Or does it become cake when it starts to fluff up? Because that was like the early 2000s. Yeah, I think if you, if you were born in like 1995, you're not really like a 90s kid. Because your earliest memories are going to be, you know, like 
from the well your your very earliest memories are probably from the 90s but then like most of your memories are coming from the 2000s i think here's a question for you um or here's here's a statement for you i guess is what i mean to say here's what i think makes you a 90s kid versus a 2000s kid if you can't eat without the tv on you're an 80s kid if you can't eat without your phone you're a 2000s kid or later. If you can just sit down and eat a meal and not need a constant form of distraction, then you're a 90s kid and you're based. Maybe a little biased, but <laughs> that's why. <right. laughs> if you can just stare straight out the window while you eat like a bowl of soup and you don't need to like uh, put your phone in a Ziploc bag to go into the shower because you're not petrified of being bored for like, you know, 11 minutes once a day then maybe you're a 90s kid like me minus two minus two. Oh, sorry gen z i forgot only gen z is allowed to make fun of millennials millennials aren't allowed to make fun of gen z gen z when uh there's an argument online where they can punch back at boomers and millennials we're part of the discourse we're part of the discourse gen z when the discourse starts to punch back at them we're all we're 12 we're 12 years old what do you want from us we're we're only 12 gen z trying to blame my 34 year old ass for climate change <laughs> somehow make it make sense i mean the the if i'm gonna argue against myself if i'm gonna steel man myself i will also say though if you're part of gen z and you're like 22 like i was a baby when i was 22 I mean this in a in a flattering way, not in a negative way. You are like insanely young if you're a 22-year-old Gen Z. Like I feel like just the conditions for like the world right now. If you when when I was becoming an adult. Bro, can you please build a wall here? I need your help. When I was uh like when I graduated from college, it was possible, like there was an, uh, it was aspirational, but it was possible to like live on your own after college. And it would probably be like in a, like a shit box. Like it would probably kind of suck, but it was like theoretically possible. And then like you could move out from your parents' place, you know, before you're 30. Now I'm like, if you're in Gen Z and your parents own their house, you should literally go like South Korean style. You should live there until you're like 45 years old. And then like if you get married or like meet someone you want to spend the rest of your life with, you guys should figure out which one of your parents you're going to live with for the next 30, 40 years. <laughs> and I don't mean that like, haha, get owned. I mean, like, I think that's just the... That's just the right decision. Talk about Gen Zs who want to be streamers and YouTubers. Well, like, I, why wouldn't you want to be like a streamer or a YouTuber? Like, I do it and I want to do it. From the outside in, it's even better. I can, I can totally see why people aspire to it. I don't see that as some kind of like, uh, you know, moral failing or something like that. Like, a 14-year-old kid who watches YouTube all day, what are they going to do? Be like, no, I want to, like, clean the sewer. <laughs> Back in my day, we had kids in our class that wanted to clean the sewer. Nobody wanted to be Elvis or Bob Hope. Everybody just wanted to clean the sewer. No, it's my turn to... It's my turn to clean the sewer. I'm a 27-year-old engineer that has to get roommates. It's awesome. I know, it, like, it's, it's fucking crazy. Like, I'm not say, saying it was easy when I was younger. But it was definitely easier. I think it's like dishonest for people to be like, you know, well, when we got our house, it was like a 12% mortgage rate. Yeah, but your house was like, you know, 4x your annual salary or something like that. Nowadays, people they get like a medical degree and uh, they live in an apartment with like six other people who all have advanced degrees. Can we get back to Paul Dano? I like Paul Dano. I got no. Yes, 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 yes. When someone asks me if we can get back to Paul Dano, I'm not trying to insult living with the homies. I'm just saying, like, at some point you want to, you know, have some privacy, maybe. Eh, fuck it. Well, it's... I also think it like changes when you have a kid. 
like my my perspective on like multi generational households. When I lived in Korea, and I was experiencing some freedom from my parents. Any chance you guys could shoot this portal, or are you just chilling or whatever? There you go. When I lived in Korea and I had some freedom from my parents, and then like people my age in Korea were like, yeah, I still live with my parents. I'm like, that sucks. Wow, rip you. Why don't you just move out, LOL, forehead. Now that I have a kid, I'm like, I want my kid to live with me like forever. Why would I want my kid to move out? That's like my favorite person in the whole world. So I'm like, maybe, maybe I'll be on the perfect timing of, of culture for myself. A taste of independence when I wanted independence, and then like, I'll just tell my kid that she can live with me rent free as long as she follows uh, an insane list of 150 rules that I make up so that she has the lifestyle of like an eight-year-old forever. <laughs> Would you rather stream Golem or Battlebit? I mean... I would rather stream Battlebit, but I did uninstall it. I need more direction. You know what the, the, the second session of Battlebit reminded me? That like, one time we went to our in-laws place and they were building a fire pit in their backyard. And Kate's mom was trying to tell me how to build the fire pit, but she doesn't speak English that well. So she would just, she just gave me the shovel and like was like pointing at where to dig. And then I was digging. And then after like 10 minutes of, of sweating it up, she would like take the shovel away and be like, no, not like that, like this. But she wouldn't like tell me what was happening. She would like just try to do it herself. And then she'd give me the shovel back and then I'd do it. And she'd be like, no, not like that. That's how I felt in battle bit. I was like, I, I had spent two hours like working against myself. I need, I need clearer directions. Oh no, That's, that moment Kate lives rent-free in my head for sure. I think about it often. <laughs> and then your brother-in-law saying, um, this isn't what he's good at, he's good at computer stuff, and being like, I... <laughs> Literally, I know how to use a shovel, you just have to tell me like how you want it shoveled, but nobody here is like explaining it. They're all just going dig, and then when I dig, they're like, not nah, like that. Like, what do you want from me? Also, I'm not good at computer stuff. Remember wearing big coats to the movie and bringing your own candy? I never brought my own candy to the movie theater. But definitely sometimes in university I'd... You know, smuggled in like a bottle of rum or something like that. But in my defense, it's really like one of the only ways you could enjoy... Death Race. With Jason Statham. I used to bring a whole KFC meal in. <laughs> it's fine, like, I, I, I had nothing really against it. Yes, I think ideally, if you were if you were trying to become the most based movie patron, you simply would not take in anything that's either smelly or noisy. I think that's a good take. But I also, I've come to realize, like, I get annoyed by, like, a lot of things in public. So in a weird way, it's kind of freeing. Because now when I'm annoyed by stuff in public, I'm not like, oh, they're doing something annoying. I'm like, I'm easily annoyed. So I try to like recalibrate a little bit. You know how like sometimes your brain tricks you and is like, I'm hungry. And then you think about it for a second and you're like, I'm not hungry. I ate like an hour and a half ago. I just want to eat. That's how what I try to do about like my natural baseline for like misanthropy. Rather than being like, wow, why did they turn their car like that? Now I'm like, maybe I'm just like pre-tilted on this one and, and they're just doing their best. Some dudes were passing around a bottle when I saw Jack Daniels. <laughs> so passing around a bottle of Jack Daniels when I saw Jackass 2. I mean, that's on you for going to see Jackass 2, honestly. Which is a, a, a great movie in my opinion. But like, what'd you expect? Of course it's going to be a party in there. I remember I saw Machete in theaters. And... My friend smuggled in a bottle of wine in his pants. And then like halfway through Machete, I was like, yo, bro, give me some of that wine. And he was like, yeah, okay, just one second. And then he never gave me the wine. So then he got up to go to the bathroom like 10 minutes later and I went with him and I was like, bro, where's the wine? And he's like, oh, I already gave it all to this girl he had a crush on who was sitting next to him. And I was like, bro, that was our wine. <laughs> 
You gave away my share of the wine! It was okay. I got over it, but like, I was a little annoyed in the moment. Telling this story with the music in the background. It's tragic! Are they married now? Hell no! Did they even date? Yeah, they dated, but like, that doesn't give me a belly full of wine. They would have dated. The question is not, did they date? The question is, would they have still dated if he didn't give her the wine? And I think the answer was yes. They were into each other. I need to give me an anecdote I could talk about 14 years later, though, so there is that. Bro, the 80s were crazy. Yeah, and this is just what we were doing when we weren't uh, building a car that can time travel. I feel like this is like making a, a Gen X Facebook meme. It's like, uh... Don't mess with an 80s kid. We're part of a club. The Breakfast Club. We know how to enjoy a day off. Picture of Ferris Bueller's day off. We're not afraid of no ghosts. Picture of Ghostbusters Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And... Where did- wait, where did I put my phone? <laughs> Hang on. Wait, I had the- you gotta see this video? Hang on, you gotta see this video? Here, just look at the phone for his- hey, wait, wait, I can't find it. I think it was on YouTube. We had the- it was this video I saw. I don't know. You ever had someone's trying to show you something, and instead of using the search bar to type in the parameters for what to see, like, they're like, I know it was a video that had this person in it that was from this TV show, and the clip is when he says this, but instead of searching, like, The Office, Jim looking in the camera, they just search The Office and then scroll down, hoping that pure luck surfaces the exact thing they're looking for? It's insane, man. My mom showing me a clip of, like, uh, Canada's Got Talent, but instead of putting the act into the search bar, she just searches Canada's Got Talent and then scrolls through 500 results until she's like, oh, this is the one. And then we watch 45 seconds, and she's like, wait a minute, I don't think this is the one. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then it's a dude, like, lip-syncing the Barbie girl or something like that. And I'm like, uh, I love my mom, by the way. This is just a, it's just a funny bit. We're just, it's just some humor. You should really limit your mom's screen time. She's doing okay. She's got no, she's from a generation. She could eat dinner without watching TV. I can go out for dinner with my mom and neither of us can look at our phone the whole time. Stop lying. I'm it's serious, man. I, uh, I grew up in a household where there was no TV during dinner time. My parents only started watching the TV during dinner when I was like, it was like age 16 or something like that. They would put on the news. And before that, it was considered a faux pas. Also, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to flex. I'm just saying, hey, R2DP, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not trying to flex that I feel like I had a, a family where my parents really like put in effort to keep the family together. But uh, we always ate dinner together, like, every night. It's crazy to me that sometimes Kate will be like, oh, as a teenager, like, my parents would say, like, dinner's ready. But then I would just, like, take a plate and go eat in my room or something like that. I'm not in my household, man. If I cook dinner or you cook dinner for our kid, and then she's like, I'm going to take the plate into my room, then I'm taking the plate into the kitchen. That's my plate now. Hang on, stand here. It's time to leave. Let's row home. Unfortunately, we can only fit uh, the counselors into the canoe. Sorry. Hey, we took our favorite four kids with us. Excuse me, timing. <laughs> That's awkward. Ah, never mind. We're okay. We were six inches from shore. Good thing we were close to shore. Could have used some lifeboats, huh? Everybody okay? You when you are at the end of 28 days later and you say, oh, thank God it's 28 days later. We should never have to deal with that again. And then a minute later, the title drops and it says 28 weeks later. Weeks? Fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
That movie sucks, by the way. I, 28 weeks later is, is still pretty okay. Alright, hang on. Sl slash marker. That's Kingdom 80s. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna play next. Because I'm not... I'm, I'm gonna give you a little break from Final Fantasy just for now. But I went to Steam250.com today, and let me tell you, there is a... A game came out this week that got me laughing so hard. Let me see what it's called here. It's called Endless Fucker. <laughs> it's 18 plus, by the way. But just seeing the title got me laughing so hard. Endless Fucker. Endless runner mechanics combined with 3D sexual content, gorgeous ladies, different body types, and loads of sexual animations. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's not just the horny game. They put a lot of work into the... Oh, my dude's dying in Kingdom. In the sexual animations. Read the reviews. Okay. <laughs> I just it better not autoplay the... The trailer when I go to Steam, though. Positive reviews. 100% of the 21 user reviews for this are positive. It's in early access. Just give it a second. Hello, human. Welcome to my simulation, the endless fucker. In here, you will be our test subject, recreating your puny life in a compressed, scientifically relevant environment where you will run an endless rat race in order to achieve personal satisfaction in the form of sex, or getting pussy, as you call it, and money, useless, trivial stores of value. Why, you ask? Because I can and I want to. To sum it up, you will run in four different environments, dodging obstacles and dangers. You will be able to collect different sexual partners. I believe 10 sexy nymphos will suffice for the purpose of inciting you to participate wholeheartedly. And I will throw in different sexual skills for your partners, enabling them to engage in different sexual poses. With that said, I believe it's time to load the simulation. Have fun. Bro, it's so funny. It's a funny game about naked people running around who end up having sex. Very simple, but exciting. 14 hours on record. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. I fapped and come to myself. Very good game. 3.3 hours on record. 2.5 hours as of review time. Whew. This is crazy, man. In this game, you can jump not only over obstacles, smiley face. Different poses, many girls. What else is needed for happiness, smiley face? It's crazy that like 30 years ago, these guys would have been the guys uh, buying those pens. Where if you flip it upside down, the lady's top comes off. And they would have been like, no matter where you, you could be in church. And the guy would be like, hey, check out this pen. And you'd be like, bro, fucking put that away. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> what happened to Halls of Torment? You're basically you're asking a question that if I answer it honestly is going to start an argument in chat. So just acknowledge that in advance. I think that my brain no longer works for Vampire Survivors clones cuz every time I play one for like the first 30 minutes, I'm like I'm I like this, I'm having a great time. And then for the next X amount of time, I'm like I'm just walking. I'm just walking around. <laughs> and then like, sometimes I'm walking and I'm killing things. And sometimes I'm walking and then like they kill me. And I go, okay. What was the sex game called? Uh, it's Team Fortress 2. Chad, be real with me. How much of a boomer are you if you use the GIF keyboard on Twitter? Or like on Discord, I guess. I've stopped um, using GIFs to reply to people because I think that it's been fully swallowed up by the boomers. Like, anytime there's any... Like, it could be like, breaking news! Nuclear missile about to hit Washington, D.C. And then all the replies are just people who search like, oh, no! <laughs> scared face. Jim from office, scared face. Just kidding. Girl from Big Brother who spits out her coffee when she tries to drink it. <sighs> True. No matter what is trending, the first result is always um, the gif of Denzel Washington 
best peacock of all time. I mean, porcupine. Denzel Washington going like this. <laughs> when I saw World War III trending, I got scared. I thought something happened to World War III. Did you see the one where Betty White was trending and people were worried she died again? <laughs> All right, that's... Listen, that's kind of funny. She died? She died like two years ago. One Chatter's Day ruined. Well, like, honestly, they, how did they not notice? I'm not buying a freaking blueberry. Like, if Betty White's that important to you, like, you should have... You should have felt like the the loss. It's okay. Oh, whoa, that's a good idea. Porcupine with blueberries. Yippee! Porcupine and blueberries. Michael from the office popping champagne gif. Very true. Very true. You ever see the TikTok of the dude who says he found the longest banana ever and it's just a plantain? I haven't seen that one. Look at that. The longest banana in the world. That's insane, right? Mmm. Tastes almost like a regular banana. A little bit more starchy. But you have to admit, the size is ridiculous, right? Look at this. Um, you ever see the video of the guy who says, Check it out, guys. Nature is glizzy. And then he eats... I found some wild glizzies. I don't even know what you call them. <laughs> a reed? <laughs> and then almost chokes on the... A cattail, that's it. And then almost chokes on the, the fiber that comes out of it. You ever see the video of the LA Beast doing the cinnamon challenge? I saw, sorry, I, saw, I saw it on the Twitter for you algorithm. It was like um, the Atreides family when they eat some Arrakis home cooking. And it, the dude just belches like 10 gallons of cinnamon straight out of his mouth and nose at the, at the start. Oh, man. See, that's the funny thing is I'm like, I'm not like other streamers. I don't do like react content, but I'm reacting right now. I'm simply not showing you what I'm reacting to. I wonder what Marshall McLuhan would think of Twitch. I mean, I know that this, we're heavy into the did you see this bit, but did you see it went kind of viral on uh, Twitter? It was like, what's going on on the apps? was the quotation and then it was a, a a lady in like makeup she was doing like a tiktok live and she was like going i'm hungry i'm hungry and then people would like pay money and it would give her like a piece My of food like a little cake would, like would pop up and she would go hum mm, i'm hungry i'm hungry and then they would put like a they'd pay money to put like a chili pepper on the screen and then she would eat it hum ooh, no spicy no spicy I'm hungry. I'm hungry. It was that for like two minutes straight. It's crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't like this bit. It's, it's not a bit. This is a real person that's living their life like this and, and hopefully making a killing, honestly. I don't think it was AI. I don't think the AI is capable of making something that cursed yet. It's too busy... We're using, like, half of Earth's resources right now just to make, like, shitty Wes Anderson clips that aren't even really like Wes Anderson that much. A 7-5 duckling? And then sell it for more stats. Blueberry, so true! The Mandalorian, when he gets blueberry porcupine? This is the way. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, so fucking true. Okay, roll me. I stopped eating and washed my hands so I could type minus two. Let's be honest, brother. Nobody here believes that you washed your hands. It's fine. Like, you don't have to pretend. That's what I'm trying to say. Forget the other chocolate. Things I don't say lightly. Forget the other chocolate. Buy me. Buff me. Roll into lemon. Give the lemon to your other cow. Well, it's still pretty good. Well, it's, it's only going to be a 3-3, three, three, but alas, so be it. 3-3 three, is three, still pretty good. Please? 
Okay, now, dude, it's not often you get a chance to A-B test this uh, Panther setup. Their Panther's gonna do 10 damage to all units. It sucks. I will never purchase a Panther. It's the easiest 10 piece of my life. Game one on turn 16. GG, GG to you as well. <clears throat> it did 20? Oh, because it was a level three. Well, actually, that's kind of crazy. I will buy a Panther immediately to try it out. How about a saucy stinker? So Victor was talking to me about Magic the Gathering, and it was fortuitous timing, because this weekend we dug out our Magic the Gathering stuff from when we played the game back in 2015. We don't really need this. Maybe we'll take it. Um, so I'm in a very fuck Magic the Gathering mood, because moving the box... To, I'm not trying to flex, but actually the box is of the Magic the Gathering stuff we have made me wish that Wizards of the Coast invented a lighter paper. Because holy cow. One Rubbermaid, like, 70 liter container of Magic the Gathering cards, this shit weighed like 95 pounds. It's, it's crazy. Just throw it out. If it was, if I was in control of it, that shit would not have made it from the house to the car. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Do you keep the good stuff in separate binders? Yeah, Kate's got all the... the Mythics and maybe even just the regular rares in like binders. And then all the bulk is in like those really long card boxes. But I have to hand it to her. It's organized super well. Like, they're organized by set, labeled, by color, and then by, like, rarity within the box as well. But, yeah, if it was me, probably, like, three weekends from now, I'd be going through those. I'd be looking up. There must be, like, a, an app now, right? Where you can just put a card in front of your phone, and it'll be, like, two cents, two cents, two cents, two cents, two cents, something like that. Um... I would take the, any, any card that was like more than a dollar, I would put in a Ziploc bag to take to Magic Stronghold. And uh, any card less than that, it would be at Value Village uh, on Monday. But Team Wood, I don't know if like you possess the connections to get this done. But have you ever considered doing like a promotion with 7-Eleven? Where, like, if someone buys a bottle of Prime Energy, they get a code they can put into Super Auto Pets to get, like, an animal that everybody loves. Like a meme animal. Like a, like a honey badger or, like, a shoe bill uh, or something like that. Something... So, a doge! That's so perfect if they can put doge in the game. Because then, you and I both know it would solve one of the big problems facing Super Auto Pets which is that the only people that are playing the game every single week and, and fill in the queue here are tur turbo nerds such as myself who are dominating the rankings and making it impossible for new players to really get involved. So if you, to get an influx, an influx of new players, maybe like a promotion at 7-Eleven or something where you, if you buy Prime Energy, they get Doge in the game so I could have some cannon fodder. How about adding the dramatic turnaround gopher? Super Auto Pets next expansion. Meme animals. Keyboard cat. Uh, dramatic turnaround gopher. David after the dentist. Ikea monkey. I do it. I would actually, I, I would buy a prime energy for Ikea monkey in the game. Just a reskin for the monkey that has the coat on. One month streak because of Prime top right. Amazon Prime. It's not just for video anymore. You can also use it to give a free subscription to... It doesn't even have to be your favorite streamer. It could just be the streamer you're watching right now. That's what I usually do. Oh, dude, they should add Tide Pod as a food. <laughs> very, very true. Oh, minus two, minus two is danger. Yeah, but when you feed it to an animal, they get really sick or something. Like, we could teach the kids not to eat detergents and other such soaps, such as. 
It's not pasta, it's pasta. Okay. Like someone from Ohio is going to teach me how to speak Italian. Next. Oh, a little friggin' bird. Friend gained ailment. Remove ailment. They did way too much, man. Friend gained ailment. You're right. You're not wrong. It would synergize with the Tide Pods. Oh! Thank you next time. Me when I'm Ariana Grande. Guy who rizzed up Livy be like, what's an ailment? Excuse me. Livy rizzed up Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk did not rizz up Livy. He's 10. Riz is the worst slang of the last decade. I feel like um, it's tied with all of them. <laughs> is that just an old guy take? Like for me, I'm like slang peaked when I was like 21. And ever since then, ever since YOLO, I've been like, whoa, YOLO's stupid. You would not catch me saying YOLO in the lane swerving and about to give her this T-Pain serving. And then ever since then, they're all tied with each other. YOLO, swag, yeet, sheesh, sus, deadass, etc., etc. I think it's like when you're part of the zeitgeist, this is just my theory, when you're part of the zeitgeist, you're like, this is funny. When you're not part of the zeitgeist, i.e. you're old, you're like, this is stupid. I, and, but it's, it's stupid because you don't get it. Hey, Mad Dog Nation, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Me, my reaction when Mad Dog Nation is not sussy. Sheesh! What's an example of good slang? Okay, old ass. I do feel like... What's funny, I, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Because I think that this is, is real, but I don't think that people are going to like that it's real. Sometimes people will be like, imagine, oh, you're in the office in like 2041, and your boss is like, yeah, bro, you can't keep risen up uh, Olivia, okay? Human Resources thinks that behavior is kind of sus. But what's maybe like what you're not thinking about is that that's actually just like what... First off, your boss sounds chill as chill AF, no cap. But secondly, I think that's just how it works, man. Like, when I talk to other men in their 30s, they say bro all the time. They say legit. Yeah, have you ever eaten that uh, lunch lady down on commercial? It's legit, bro. The pho is amazing. That place is sick. So I've heard. Legit is the boomer dead ass. Hang on, before you make that bit, you gotta say it like this. I don't wanna go off on a rant here, but does anyone else think that legit is just dead ass for boomers? Oh! That's a huge draw. I don't wanna go off on a rant here, but does anyone else think that H Bomber guy is to Gen Z as Dennis Miller is to the baby boomers? Not really. There are opposite sides of the political spectrum. Although we didn't know that about Dennis Miller at the time. I don't even know. Your ass is sitting in the middle. Like Malcolm. Freddie Muniz. Something, 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 something. Devin Nunez. <laughs> I'm working on my, my next rap. <laughs> Your lyrics are in the middle. Like Frankie Muniz. Then I gotta learn some shit about Dennis, Devin Nunez. Hey God, we could get there, man. That that could totally work. <laughs> you beating me's like Billy Crystal playing Scarface. You see with your eyes, boom, bow, surprise. Oh! Nobody on your squad has any attack. <laughs> you don't think "Girl on Fire" is a good song? Look, the, you're in danger of getting the base police called on me. Okay. What about Babies on Fire by Brian Eno? Now we're talking from Here Come the Warm Jets. I'll, here Come the Warm Jets, yes, please. Road work ahead, another green world. Gee, I sure hope it does. Anyway, I don't find it that interesting 
when like a singer has just like a good voice. And this is a take that oftentimes gets me branded as a hater. But like Alicia Keys, Charlie Puth, <laughs> that doesn't sound, seem like how you pronounce that. You know, just a, any song that's like, you should hear this guy's voice, it's so interesting. Rag and Bone Man, John Legend, stuff like that. That's, that's just the sort of stuff that it just doesn't appeal to me. Most, for the most part. If someone can have like an amazing voice and make interesting music as well, then that's, I'm not going to hold it against them. But if it's just like, hey, here's like uh, the same song you've heard on the radio for the past 40 years, but check it out. They've got a really, really good voice. I'm like, brother, they like all got really, really good voices. That's why it's so boring. Let me give this to you for now. Did you hear that NL just rizzed up his cockroach? My man nuts for the bare naked ladies, but passes on Alicia Keys. I don't nut for the bare naked ladies, for the record. Well, depends on the lady. <laughs> oh, sheesh! Not the ant. Oh, that's worse. Sheesh! Okay, do you have my word? No porcupine this time, okay? By the way, thanks for the setup. Appreciate that. I just, I don't know. I just don't think the Alicia Keys music is that interesting. I say the same shit about, like, fucking Nora Jones, Diana Krall. I'm, I'm large, there's, there's exceptions. I'm pretty uninterested in music if you can describe the artist as a singer-songwriter. What about Elliot Smith? That's different. <laughs> Joni Mitchell? That was 50 years ago, okay? Destroyer? No one would be like, oh, here's Destroyer. What's his music? Oh, he's a singer-songwriter. It's always like, here's some 15-year-old kid from Alaska, and you won't believe it. Their song sucks, but it sucks in the way that usually it takes an older person to make a song that bad. You won't believe it. This 17-year-old from Alaska sings just like John Legend. Click. Why you roasting Jewel? This jewel's kind of... Oh, I'm buffing the fucking cockroach! Oh. <laughs> Losing to a damn gecko. That's how bad this squad is. Hang on. No, we're washed. No, we're not washed. We're so... Thank you. Merciful. Merciful. The hell? It's like a dollar an hour. If you're broke, just say so. <laughs> Now that's the tweet that we should have been talking about all day. The one where the lady says, I don't have time for this kind of stuff anymore. And it's a screenshot of her text interaction with the guy that she was going to go out on a date with. And he was like, uh, hey, are you excited for the picnic today? And she said, yeah, do you need to know my address so you can come pick me up? And he said, oh, I didn't know I was picking you up. And then a second later, he was like, sure, can I get your address? And then she said, you know what? Never mind. Have a good day with your friends. And then he replied, not me with my whole car packed for a picnic, but okay, you do you. She posted a screenshot like she was sure that she was the one in the right. Oh, man. It's as close to React Chord as we're going to get. It's the only way we could do React Chord now because it's the only place where you can find people crazy enough to post stories where they're obviously in the wrong is on Twitter. On Reddit, it's all just made up now. No wonder streamers do so much React content. Some of my favorite content I'm realizing is like, it's, it's Twitter React content. Lady who took a picture of that house with uh, skeletons crawling all over it because it was Halloween. And saying, like, I get that it's Halloween, but this is disrespectful to people who have had family members die. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a classic. Lady who said she can't care about Afghanistan because her father was an alcoholic. Her Afghanistan was hearing his key in the door every night. Like, lady, what are you talking about? Mr. Beast pretending that he got invited to be on the Titanic. Listen, this is not going to be a popular take, okay? 
I believe that Mr. Beast was invited on the Titanic submarine. I know that his speech bubble in the screenshot was blue. And I don't know all about the different colors of speech bubbles that you get on iPhone or Android, okay? I just don't think that he would... I don't think from what... I don't know anything about Mr. Beast. I would just be surprised if he faked it. And I also think if he was going to fake it, he would fake it right instead of faking it badly and like being exposed. I, I get that it's, it's funnier if he faked it. But I don't think he did. Hang on, did they change the ostrich? Hang on, let me throw up real quick. Yeah, they were inviting all sorts of people on that thing. One of the writers from The Simpsons. That reporter who definitely should have, like, talked more about the security concerns with the thing. I think my wife's a little bit insane. Like, hang on, chocolates, please. We were talking about the submarine stuff. Like, this is, we're, we're fucked, boys. <laughs> it's, it's so over. She was, we were talking about the submarine, and I was like, I just don't understand, like, why those people would, like, go down on the submarine. And she was like, you know, I was, she wasn't thinking about going down on the submarine, but she was like, if I got offered, I think I probably would have, because it's interesting. And I'm like, it's, we already know that the thing imploded. Like, it's, it's a known fact. I mean, it didn't implode on every journey, but, like, on the last one. And then she was asking me, like, if, if they make, like, space travel or, like, recreational flights to the moon, would you go to the moon? And I was like, no shot. To, my version of the moon is, like, buying a case of sparkling water and sitting out on my patio, scrolling through my phone, enjoying the sun and, and drinking as many bubblies as I want. I'm, I'm content down here on Earth. I got no interest being in the rocket ship, especially, be, and I've said this before, but like the space travel right now is like the Wright Brothers era of flight. There's a few people doing it. They are getting to the point where like, it's not, I, it's, people are just gonna disagree with this, but like space travel is like so risky. It's not like every rocket explodes. But it's like one in one in fifty trips or something like that ends catastrophically. If one in fifty Skytrain trips ended with like a derailment, my ass would be gone. I would I would be walking everywhere. That's I won't even ride a motorcycle because it's so dangerous. And also, I'm a nice person who doesn't want to wake up sleeping people at like three a.m., which is the only time when motorcycles can apparently run. But like. I, the motorcycles are probably a hundred times safer than being an astronaut. They might even be like a thousand times safer than being an astronaut. So I don't want to go, even if in like 30 years, they're like, hey, you can take trips to the moon now. I'm chilling on Earth because that's like aviation circa 1940. The odds of me dying on the rocket ship are not like... 50-50, but it's higher than I'm willing to go just to go to the damn moon. Anyway, would love your thoughts on this. I hear you, but also it's the moon. I hope I'm not making a mistake with this moon, but... Cranston. You think this can work now? We're on turn 13? Turn 10? Team 10? It's every day, bro. What about a submarine? This is like, I guess it's morbid. I think I would rather go on a rocket than a submarine. Because, at, like, I would be scared by both. And I think deservedly so. But at least, if you die going to space, is probably gonna be like pretty quick. I know that this submarine imploded in like less than a tenth of a second or whatever, but like some submarine deaths are really, you know, it's the stuff of nightmares. 
Well, just in general, like I know, because people are saying it's for recreation, right? Here's something I used to like figure out if I would do something for recreation. Uh, as soon as you ask me to do it, is my first uh, question: uh, what, Which alternative has the least painful death? <laughs> Like, I think that's a good sign that you're probably not going to have fun doing the thing that you got asked to do. Hmm. Trip to the moon or submarine to the Mariana Trench. Um, I might have pronounced it wrong, but I was about to say Marinara Trench, so it could have been worse. But, like, if my wife wants to go to the moon, like, I'm an ally. I'm not gonna go to the moon just because she wants to, but she can go to the moon and I'll like hold down the fort. I'll pay her property taxes and stuff. You know they're not gonna give you a moon exemption for that shit, so like somebody's gotta do it. What if she takes the kid? Brother, you know what that means. I get some me time. Like I'll go on a little trip because my wife wants to go somewhere that I'm like not that interested in. And maybe, you know, I go and I'm interested now. But I'm not going to the damn moon. That shit is like, uh... That's a long-ass trip, man. Holy cow, we might make it to ten. <laughs> One snake is not gonna change you here. Lionfish or chocolate would go crazy. Otherwise, like, steaks and good equipments. Come on. Cranston. I think a chocolate is still more important. I would consider this round a success if we just got chocolate or a lionfish. Okay, eat me. You had your chance. I don't see us winning this one. That's just math talking. If we had chocolate, though, I think we win that. I'm, I'm happy with nine either way. Okay, Tomo, you want to go? You want to go? You want to go, bro? You want to go? You want to go to lunch lady on commercial and get some legit pho? You want to get some bun bo hay? Pretty good bunbo hay pronunciation. Hey, that's because I miss. I, I was gonna say bunbo hay, but then I said the word wrong. But maybe wrong was right here. You at a Vietnamese restaurant? Mm, I'll take the rare beef pho. Me at a Vietnamese restaurant? Hey, let me get the lemongrass pork chop, and I will pay the upcharge to get some chicken with that as well. Thank you. Oh, really? You like Vietnamese food? Name three uh, dishes. Um, 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 pho, um, 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 uh, um, 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 uh, spring rolls? Ah, oh, fuck! Me. Mmm, lemongrass pork chop. <laughs> I am, I am very smart. I promise I'm not just trying to make this stream like things I disagree with my wife on. She goes crazy for the summer rolls, man. And I just, I, I will say that there's a, just let the story follow up here for a second. I had never had a summer roll that tasted, I don't even want to say good, but had tasted like something I want to eat. Anytime I'd ever gotten the summer roll at a Vietnamese restaurant, it had been like under duress. They're like, oh, we're out of spring rolls. Or like, oh, I'm like, I want a spring roll, but I... I'm trying to lose weight, so give me a summer roll instead. Then, we ordered Vietnamese from a different place. I believe it's called An and Chi in Vancouver. Kate got a summer roll, and it came with like a freaking huge summer roll. She said, you got to try this. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that summer rolls could actually taste good. I didn't know that there could be like, they could be crispy and fresh and you don't need to dunk them in the peanut sauce just to be able to masticate them. They were, there was like the, the average summer roll at a Vietnamese restaurant tastes like they, they wrapped it first in saran wrap and then the rice paper. That's the only way I know how to describe it. This one, they left out the saran wrap. It's the first time I've ever, I've ever tasted a, a summer roll that agreed with me. What's a summer roll? It's like, usually it's rice noodles, like vermicelli, um, like a thin strip of shrimp and julienne carrots, 
uh, the other day, also called a fresh roll, sure. It's, an, it's like an unfried spring roll. Also called a shrimp salad roll. That's not a spring roll. A spring roll is deep fried. I previously thought it was a spring roll, but worse. But then I've, I've learned the error of my ways. I've never had a fried spring roll. You should try it. They're fucking sick, dude. There's no such thing as a fried spring roll. That's an egg roll. Where do you live? You know what? Don't give me the address. Just the city. Tell me the metropolitan area you live in. You better hope it's not Columbus. Or Cincinnati. Because I feel like you are Ohio posting right now. Any, I, mean, I don't know if it's a Canadian Vietnamese thing, okay? But in a Canadian Vietnamese restaurant, spring roll is a little cigar-sized deep-fried roll. The rice paper is deep-fried to a golden brown, uh, and it's cylindrical. There's a slight ingredient difference between that and an egg roll, but the main difference is that the uh, spring roll is like rolled crispy rice paper, and the egg roll is more like, it looks like a pillow. And then it's like a, it's like an eggier type batter. It's got air bubbles in it and stuff like that. It's like a pocket. It's almost like eating the McDonald's apple pie full of spring roll ingredients. In Ohio, we call that a steamy blankie. Come on. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You don't. I'm sorry. Maybe you do. I don't know. I've never been to Ohio. Summer rolls are called baby arms here because they look like a baby's arm. No, they're not. <laughs> that one's freaking me out because it's actually plausible. They kind of do look like a baby's arm, although it wouldn't be like my first thought. <laughs> There's a great banh mi placed by me in San Diego. Such killer spring rolls. I'm not trying to put the whole country on blast, okay? I really feel like banh mi could become the most popular sandwich in America. I sincerely believe that. It just needs one thing, and I'm gonna get booed for saying it, but it's true. It needs to be more full. My, here's my experience buying a banh mi, and I do it a lot, maybe like once every few months, and I enjoy it, but here's what always happens. I look at the menu and I go, holy cow, fuzz like 11 bucks and banh mi is like 650? Give me a $6.50 sandwich. And then it comes out and I'm like, it's like this big and there's no ingredient. There's like one little layer of ingredients on it. And I'm like, that's why it's 650. And then I eat it and I'm like, this shit is delicious. I think you could make banh mi go take over the world. I'm not saying it's not doing well. I'm just saying it could take over the world if you just multiplied the filling of a banh mi by 1.75. It's a lot. Like, that's, that's close to doubling. I'm not going to purchase two. I'm not going to eat two baguettes. Who do you think I am? Regina George? Just give me a baguette that's twice as long. And then put 75% more stuff on it. <laughs> two banh mi is a little too much. Thank you. It's like uh, what I used to say. Was like, I'm, I'm, they need to make like a medium large for men's shirts. Because I'm always at the store and I'm like, oh, do I need a medium or a large? Well, sometimes I would need a medium. And if I got a large, it was like I was swimming in it. And sometimes I'd need a large. If I got a medium, it was like it was showing off my belly button like uh, Terry from FUBAR. But now, uh, now that I lost some weight, I realized actually I was just a little bit chubby. Actually, I just need a medium. But I still think that there could be a market for extra mediums. <laughs> I think medium shirts could take over North America. They just need one simple trick. And people are going to boo me for this, but... Yeah, more filling. <laughs> they just need like 8% more fabric. No, I don't know. I think extra medium kind of makes sense though. Like they have so many XLs. They go up to like 5XL, 6XL. And they go down to like extra small. Maybe they even go to extra, extra small. 
but they're not putting any more sizes in the middle. There's a big difference between medium and large. Just buy two mediums. Two mediums is too big. Buy two mediums, what am I, Regina George? Just make the medium as big as two mediums. Why don't they make, dude, everyone, you have now signed an NDA. This information is under embargo, okay? It's 2023. You're still going into a shoe store like it's fucking Subway. Hey, you got this in a number nine? Ridiculous. Now, when you order from my store, first things first, we send you a, a, a pallet of goo in the mail. You step on it. You send it back. We now have a perfect mold of your foot. We print your shoes to order. We don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, why don't you tell the world without telling them that you're not an in-betweener. Congrats, your shoe's exactly nine and a half long. Congrats, you're exactly a size 11. Congrats, you're a size 6. What about those amongst us who are a 6.81? What about those amongst us who are a 9.13? Well, you can get anything made to order. You can get a blood test. You can find out how related to Genghis Khan you are. They can put your damn brain into a USB key and plug it into your PS5. But you're, oh, we're, we haven't done We haven't suffered enough as a society to deserve shoes that actually fit. Fuck you, dude. You're not invited on this rocket ship. Now, I need, does anybody here own a factory somewhere that labor costs are like really low? Because this is going to be like a real, we need a lot of money to get this going. There's going to be a lot of overhead involved. And does anyone know what kind of goo we could use for this? Because I would just kind of said goo as like a placeholder. Do the goo thing, but for shirts? Do the goo thing, but for shirts. Let me think about that. I gotta think about that. Do the goo thing, but for shirts. The goo thing. I didn't freeze like any tier fives, but I'm in, I love it either way. So a tailor? <laughs> That's true. But like, there's problems with tailors, man. They take too long. When I got fitted for that suit, it took like an hour. The dude was taking all sorts of measurements. And then he was asking me questions. He was like, how do you like your suit? And I'm like, brother, I got no idea. You're the one with an Italian accent. Just tell me what will make me look like uh, Gerard Butler. You like a tapered sleeve or a cannon sleeve? And I'm like, I don't even know what any of that, I don't know what it means, man. Reused bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, but when Squeaks does it, everybody laughs. Magic tricks for making friends. When I was really young, I'd have an iPod Touch, and I'd Google whatever I wanted. You know, I Googled boobs, I Googled whatever. And then once my dad took my iPod Touch and was like, Yo, um, Squeaks. I looked through your Google history, and it says boobs. And then the second result in history was magic to make friends. <laughs> Now my dad, being a smart fellow, is like more concerned about the magic to make friends <laughs> than he was about boobs. And he was like, I'm scared it's going to stunt his growth, you know? Anyway, on an unrelated note, look at my hand. Can I sit with you? Can I sit with you guys? <laughs> and then my ass lost like 35 pounds between the first time I wore this suit and the second time I wore this suit. So now this shit makes me look like David Byrne. Everybody sees me at Palo on the Disney cruise. They say, hey, where's your lamp post, David Byrne? Where's your lamp post? And I say, I don't have a lamp post. I'm not David Byrne. You forgot to use the ostrich? Yeah. Robbie Burns. Oh, dude! He's Robbie Burns posting. Robbie Burns. I just realized, we done the whole stream today with this one unbuttoned? Maybe like a snooty pet, like a cat. Did you guys know that people are horny for the dad from Inside Out? I did know that. Hang on, let me see. Dad from Inside Out. Oh, that's him. His name is Mr. Anderson. It's time we finally talked about the hot dad from Inside Out. Wow, fam, I am so sorry. 
Here I am in 2017 thinking I'd already written a post about something in 2015, but after a quick Google search, I guess I didn't. Okay, hang on. And because your thirsty ass clicked on this post, you know what I'm referring to. It's the hot dad from Inside Out. But low-key, high-key, Riley's dad, appropriately referred to as dad throughout the film, was the real reason you enjoyed Inside Out. Like, and then it's just a close-up on his eyes. Dad was cute when Riley was a baby and even looked like a CGI snack with a beanie on his head, which no actual human can do. No offense, Mouth. But sisters, when the movie arrives at present day... Dad is a man who can turn me inside out. Perfect teeth. A modest ass. Dad's got it all and mom knows it. Unfortunately, this movie is about his daughter, so I'm already out of imagery for this post. But thank you, Pixar. Simply thank you. So how did I find out about this? Well, like a... A Twitter account posted Happy Father's Day, and it was a picture of the dad from Inside Out. And then all the replies were like, skus, 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 skus. they know what they did with this one. And I was like, I don't get it at all, which is not rare for me online these days. But and then I looked into it further, and people were posting a picture, and it's like him lounging on the couch in his underwear with like a bulge. And I was like, that's funny. The people made like fan art for that. And then. There's one that's just, he's just got his cock out. He's in the same seat, but he's just got like a huge penis. Anyway, people are very strange these days. Link? <laughs> yeah, librarian, you might have to do some work on that one. Hello, Josh. Hi. I fucking found the picture. I hate you. It would. It. Like, don't date me. I didn't make it, for one. Also, it's not hard to find. Because, like, I found it ambiently. I was just walking around, and the, the, the picture... Well, no, I was uh, scrolling. But then, like, the, the picture found me, man. The picture found me. You, I didn't look for it. How could I look for it when I didn't know it existed? I was like somebody that goes... To, like, I'm like the plucky reporter from a high school newspaper who's like, mm, something seems fishy. And then I'm going through, like, the microfiche at the library and I accidentally uncover like a conspiracy for murder or something like that. I'm just like, why is everybody posting about the dad from inside out? Three clicks later, I see the damn tip of his penis. Oh, a librarian looked for it? Yeah, but then, you know, that's, they're working right now. I can see the penis in your glasses reflection. No, you can't. I'm looking at super auto pets. Unless there's like a little... Is it imprinted? Did it get... Can you... This might sound like a stupid question, but there's no such thing as stupid questions. Can you get burn-in on your glasses the same way you can get burn-in on, like, a TV? You're right, that is a stupid question. By the way, you guys lied to me. We're gonna buy a new TV. Everybody told me that TVs were like insanely cheap now. I go looking up uh, 75 inch TVs. Shit is like 2,500 Canadian dollars. That's expensive, man. I mean, it probably would have been like 10 grand a few years ago, but 75 inches? That's huge? I thought that was like a normal TV size this day and age. How big's your TV? 60? 65? 20? Okay, fucking 24. You gotta get on that. Like, it's not 1995 anymore. 24 is like... How out of touch are you? Brother, I, I live in Vancouver. I don't go over to my friends' houses. My friends don't have houses. I don't know. How else would I figure out how big the average TV is in, in the modern era? I've lived here for 12 years. How big is the average TV? 50 inches normal? Can you believe we used to play like four player GoldenEye on a 19 inch CRT sitting on a bed 10 feet away from the screen? No wonder I, my eyes are completely fucked. Josh said I've got a 27 inch TV in my basement and I'm stunned we used to use it for gaming. But do, I mean, we're, we're born in the same year. I'm sure you got experiences like this as well. 
when I don't know how big I think we had a 13 inch TV the first house I lived in like with my parents when I was under the age of six then we moved and we bought a new TV it was 19 inches and it sat across the room from us and then on top of that uh it was we lived in a duplex and my grandparents lived on the second level but they had a satellite but we couldn't control what we saw on tv it just piped their tv signal down to our tv so like we didn't even get to choose what we were watching we would just have to watch whatever my grandpa's watching and if something like real that we wanted to see came on we could like phone upstairs or knock on the like partition and be like hey can you put on cbs like everybody loves raymond is coming on then, so this, this was like until high school, basically. And then in the 10th grade, uh, my parents bought me a flat screen. And it's actually like uh, the Michael Scott flat screen scene. Like they were like, we weren't sure we wanted to make an investment like this, but it seems like flat screen technology sticking around. So, you know, you might be able to get to hand this down to your kids someday. And it's like... Uh, I think it's a 17 inch flat screen. It was mounted on the wall, like really, really high up in my bedroom. And it was like, it wasn't even a reputable brand. It was called like, like Flattronics or something like that. I know you're like, it's Plantronics. It was not. It's Panasonic. It was not. It was like Flattronics, like a company I've never heard of before or since. But I think they finally got rid of that one. Oh, man. TVs, they've come a long way. It probably cost a ton of money. You're not wrong. Like, I bet it was expensive when they bought it. Is that what you played PGR and Halo on? Yeah, man. It was like a, a, a shitty little flat screen. Now I got all the tools at my disposal. I got like a Starship Enterprise view screen in front of me. Another view screen just for corresponding with the chat. Another view screen that I don't even use half the time. And I'm worse at games. Hang on, it's 10 minutes till my wife's stream, but she's not uh, home right now. She took the kids <laughs> to daycare. My heart. But I, actually, I'm going to go late today anyway, because I was late getting in here. That's right. Also, what am I going to play when the stream's done? More Super Auto Pets. So true. Why does he only talk in memes now? I don't know. I wish I could change. 34 year olds when I was a baby were like CEOs and uh, leaders of the world. Now 34 year olds are like my reaction when I pee and the pee splits into two streams. No! <laughs> now 34 year olds are like, did you see the post that was, um, oh no, mom found the cum box? Dead ass, it's so annoying when you get the two streams. People expect you to believe that, like, science exists and can be trusted, even when nobody in science has ever explained why the two streams happens. Some people say it's when you got dry, you know what, in your urethra. Brother, I've been two streaming it since I was, like, a, a little kid. There's no you-know-what passing through the urethra back then. It's, a, it's something to do with the rifling or, like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, that's why I'm hoping somebody smarter than me can figure it out. The rifling? What do you do? Why, Josh, why are people pretending that they don't know about the rifling? It's rifled. You ever see the stream when it comes out? It doesn't come out in, like, a, a just a cylinder. It's got, like, a little twist in it. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's when you piss. It has like a Dan Marino spiral on it. It's not coming out straight ahead like, you know, if I was trying to throw a football, the shit would be like flipping end over end in the air. It's, it's spiraling as it's, it flicked its wrist when it came out. It's like you're not even listening. Why is it called rifling? Because that's what makes a rifle a rifle, is that the rifle barrel is like corkscrewed because it puts spin on the bullet and that's how you can shoot enemies that are around the corner. There's no rifling inside of the tube. It's because the stream is cylindrical, but the opening is flat. 
Well, first off, maybe your opening. Not my opening. Wouldn't be my opening. But that's interesting. That's interesting to think about. I never really thought about that. <laughs> Easy 10 piece. No porcupine required. You at a Vietnamese restaurant? Uh, I'll take the rare beef pho and give me a porcupine, please. Me at the Vietnamese restaurant? Give me two banh mi's worth of ingredients shoved into one banh mi baguette. And give me six capybaras, please. Give me one extra medium shirt. Josh and Mouth. I know you're still here, Mouth. Give it to me straight. How do I print from PDF? No, give it to me straight. What do you think the odds are that an extra medium shirt could become an industry standard? Now, you're going to say something stupid like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I'm getting downvoted by Mouth's facial hair. I think there needs to be a size between small and medium and a size between medium and large. Like there could be a, a shmedium and a, and a marge. I refuse to wear marge. Oh, you could call it a ledium or something. I, I think extra medium is good. You could call it medium large. Ah, that's too many words. We're, we're at the print shop. You're pr probably paying by the letter, right? So... Kids XL can be an adult extra medium. Well, that would be great if I wanted a shirt that had fucking Marshall from Paw Patrol on it. That was made for like a portly nine-year-old. But I want like a, a shirt for an adult. I don't want a, I don't want a boy's shirt. I want a man's shirt. Men only wear rubble. True, true. It's kind of crazy that like in the modern... When I was a kid... Men in their 30s that were cool, like wore suits and stuff like that. Now the coolest thing that a man in his 30s can wear is like a t-shirt that says like Toronto Blue Jays 1993 World Series winners. And then it has like a, a picture of the World Series trophy runs from like navel to like the collar. And then there's just like seven Toronto Blue Jays logos pasted around the side. And then one image of Joe Carter having swung, swung his baseball bat. Why is this getting minus two? I'm, this is a real, th it's a real thing. Oh, I get it. You guys are probably Cincinnati Reds fans. <laughs> is that who the Blue Jays beat in that World Series? No, they probably, they're Phillies, right? I don't know. His cool radar is so off. It's not off. I live in a cool city. Your ass probably lives in Ohio. You think I don't know cool? I see cool guys every day. I make sure to block the eye line between them and my wife so she doesn't get any ideas, okay? I'm protecting my wife from cool guys 24-7. You think I don't know what a cool guy looks like? I don't even want to know what cool looks like in Ohio. Probably a dude wearing his tack vest to Subway. He's getting ready for a civil war, but if the dude puts green peppers on his sandwich, he's going to cry. So I, I it was over the line, but it's just making me so mad. <laughs> Just pisses me off, man. I'm probably like the greatest sat player live right now. Don't even check the the category, it's not relevant. Scooty's playing backpack hero right now. Yes! <laughs> Best sat player, asterisk, live right now on Twitch, asterisk, as of uh, 205 PM. Wasn't even close. I heard that laugh, Kate. Let me guess, you just saw how big the... <laughs> how many... freaking things we got? She saw the inside out, Dad? No! Don't, don't click show more! Don't click show more! Can we pivot to the aunt from Big Hero 6? Okay, hang on a second. It's troubling that you had that one ready to go. Ant from Big Hero 6. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. Control D. I'll see you later. 
I'm adding that to my cringe collection. Krungo. What do you guys think Krungo would sound like? <laughs> Average Twitch streamer dialogue. <laughs> If Krungo was a place, you guys, where do you think it would be? Did you see the edited video of uh, Nick A30 saying you guys have to realize, like, they were down in that submarine. They had no uh, darkness, like, or no light. It's pitch black. They couldn't see anything. They had no food, no water. Imagine being down there, because not only is it just pitch black, like, you can't see anything. Like, imagine being in a tight, confined space. It's pitch black. You have no food. They don't have Fortnite. No Fortnite, but then the part where he said no Fortnite was definitely like AI edited. It got me really good though. That's what's great about AI is like just because something funny didn't happen doesn't mean that it, you can't see like what it would have looked like if it did. <laughs> you know what I mean? No Fortnite, no cola? No! No Fortnite and cola! No yippee! He didn't actually say no Fortnite, but man, oh man, if he did, holy, that would have been hilarious. Oh, really? I thought I owned you. There's a lot of great Fortnite memes out there. That one that it was just mentioned. <laughs> Others as well. The guy, uh, after he got a shotgun kill in Fortnite, moaning like he's having an orgasm. Yeah, Young Llama Fortnite moan, thank you. Ah! Guy in Fortnite getting shot one time and then building like uh, the Burj Dubai and then peeking out at the top and getting one tapped. Goku hitting the gritty. There's lots of lots of stuff to like in, in Fortnite, man. Why do you know so many Fortnite memes? You see them now and then on on Twitter, if if you're there, which I am sometimes. Josh, you ever think about the fact that like 2005 sounds so long ago that it like doesn't even feel real? I lived like a whole fucking year in 2005. I had shit happen in 2005. I was like 11th, the end of 11th, started 12th grade. Probably this is when I maybe got my driver's license. Now I'm like 2005. I was wearing a, a white old navy t-shirt with like a navy blue ring around the collar. And then I was putting a really, really light blue uh, button up shirt over top of it. But I wasn't doing up any of the buttons. I was doing up none of the buttons. I was wearing... Puma shoes with a racing stripe down the side. They were my most prized possession. And I was looking at pictures of my parents in high school going, geez, people look stupid back then. Luckily, we got over that phase. Puma shoes are so ugly, man. Uh, your mom didn't think so. Back then. Last night. Plus two. <laughs> your mom jokes worked back then as well. Some things never change. Big fish, how original. Plus two, but in 2005? Bro, with inflation, that's crazy. Did you have a kid who showed up with a Zune thinking he was so smart and that Apple was just a fad? One of my friends had an iPod, like Gen 1 click wheel iPod. Everybody else thought they were smarter than Apple. I had a creative Zen jukebox. Josh had a Zune. I don't even know what Malf had. I know that Malf had a uh, Malf had a Volvo station wagon, and if you asked for the aux cord, he had a little tape that you put into the tape deck with a little headphone jack coming out of it. You plug that into your Creative Zen jukebox, and then you play the Broken Social Scene self-titled. I still have that. That's crazy. That can't. Well, you you don't use it though. You don't use it though. The OMG, he does. All right, I'm going to send you over to Kate's stream. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. I got Bluetooth now. Sounds like you should see a dentist. Or something. I don't know.
Just plus two me. We got to go. I live in a cool city. Your ass probably lives in Ohio. You think I don't know cool? I see cool guys every day. I make sure to block the eye line between them and my wife so she doesn't get any ideas, okay? <laughs> I'm protecting my wife from cool guys 24-7. You think I don't know what a cool guy looks like? Oops. She's, he's protecting me from seeing cool guys. If you don't see him, his protection is working. I, I, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have never seen Ryan go and like, Hey, don't look that way. Look at this way. Look at this way. Eyes on me. Oh my gosh. So yesterday, or not yesterday, two days ago on Saturday, we built this like uh, playhouse for Luna. So it's like it's a tiny clubhouse, right? It's a perfect fit for a toddler, but it's way too small for a fully grown adult. So like when Luna was like, come in, daddy, come in, mommy, once we were done building it, I had to like literally make myself as small as possible in order to fit in fit into the clubhouse and then <laughs> and then she was like come in daddy come in and then ryan was trying to get in he was he was able to um manage to get like top half his, of his body inside of the clubhouse but then literally his ass was too big like like he could not squeeze his ass cheeks to like fit inside of the clubhouse and then <laughs> i was laughing and then ryan's like oh my gosh my ass is too big and then i'm like oh my gosh daddy's ass is too big he cannot fit in and then luna is like oh my gosh daddy's ass is too big and i and then we were laughing so hard and i was like i was like you like you cannot like push or anything and then Ryan's like nah dude like this is it this is like this is as far as I can get in and it was like right at the ass and I was like oh my gosh if I was on the other side like if I wasn't inside of the clubhouse I would have taken out my phone and would have taken the photo and I would have been like Wat Watanabe you would not believe what happened today but then Ryan tried to squeeze himself but then his ass was too big <laughs> <laughs> oh, help me, step bro. I'm stuck. Okay, you're killing me. We need that forbidden video. I told you so many times that his ass is huge, and and chatters were like, we understand he got a huge ass, but like, is it bigger than this guy? And I was like, yeah, dude. And then you guys are like, no way, no way. Guess what, man? It's like almost redeemed that his ass could not fit through the clubhouse. How about some goal for you to ask Raya for permission? There is no way. Are you kidding me? He doesn't even want to tell you guys his actual height. And everyone goes like, wait, I thought he was 6'2". Wait, I thought he was 6'2". And then I'm like... Nah, dude, he's not 6'2", and everyone goes like, how, how tall is Ryan? How tall is Ryan? I'm like, I'm not telling, dude. You ask Ryan. He's not even telling his uh, uh height. He's definitely not going to tell you the size of his ass. If you post a video, I will follow you to... I will follow you OB Twitch. That's my offer. Take it or leave it. I cannot share the picture of Ryan's ass. Ryan told me that cannot leave my phone. His heights are on the wiki. We just need to know his ass three sides. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe one day I would ask Ryan to sit on a chair, but then the chair is actually made out of like, like the clay. And then I can, I can get like his ass mold. And then maybe I can sell the ass mold, dude. And then people can sit on it to see the ass difference. Retirement plan. Do you think it will sell well? This is a bad idea. 
Why? It's like, it's like the chair, but then like the print of ass. I cannot think of any reason why it's a bad idea. You see? Hack is with me. Anyone else? <laughs> he cannot stop all of us. There, there gotta be... There gotta be... Some kind of like special merch that we can do. Like, we gotta make like a special chair or something. Yeah, but then we gotta like... Put, like, we gotta make it cool. We cannot just sell the ass mold. That's just like, what are you gonna do with it? But if we, like, have it be a chair or something, or, like, a cushion, maybe cushion that is, like, that has the imprint of Ryan's ass or something. If it's a mouse pad, it gotta be the biggest mouse pad of all time. <laughs> Yo, no, 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 wait, hold on. Instead of, instead of the real life one-to-one -one size of Ryan's ass, you know those, like, the booby mouse pad? Just do that, but then, like, have Ryan pose it so that it looks like it's his ass. But it's actually, it's just default mouse pad. You know what I'm saying? And, like, and, like, and then, like, his pose is, like, ass out looking back. Looking kind of cute, you know what I'm saying? I want to buy that too. <laughs> yeah, 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 with the finger on his lips. I want to, I want, I want to buy that. I want to buy that. Oh man, how can we make this happening? <laughs> I want that. I want that. I will. I will ask him on a good day. When we're all happy and everything, maybe a little bit of beer in him. I'll just just go like little little sneak, little quick question. And then be like, do you think you can pose like that for me, babe? Just yep, yeah, we're looking good. Just yep, yeah, look look at the camera. <laughs> and then I freaking ship it and sell it, dude. Do you think I would actually make enough money to buy? A Lamborghini? I don't- I don't know about that. I think that's like a huge high hope. <laughs> what I mean? Yes, 100%. How the hell would any- like, I don't understand. <laughs> well, like, people are that interested? They would only buy one. People will come. You just build it. Yeah, but then when I order it, I have to give them the estimate of like, the number. I was gonna say like, 100. But then do you think if I say 100, do you think it will sell out? What if you guys say like, if I make 100 and then you say it will sell out, but then that never sells out. And now I have like 100 of like Ryan's ass mouse pad in my garage. <laughs> that is, that is also good. <laughs> Sounds like win-win. 5,000? Five, Can I pre-order? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I have to... I will I will do my best to make this happen. I'm sure there is like a there got to be you know like a t-shirt company where they they make like cu custom t-shirt like there got to be like custom mouse pads, right? Would would Jay do it? It's a very common thing. How about Ruka's ass too. Should I do Ryan's ass, Ruka's ass, Tomo's ass? <laughs> what do you mean that's too far? Oh man. Okay, fine. Ryan's ass. Monumental day. I will. I will do my best, Chad. Okay. I'll do my best. If I ask him today, right now, it will. He will say no. And like that's it. Like there's, I only have this one chance. I can ask, and I have to find the right time, right moment, and I have to like strike. If I if I just go ask, he's just gonna say no, and that's gonna be it. I just you gotta let me do it, okay, Chet? It's I I only have one chance to do it. If you if you go like, hey, Anil, uh, did you know that your wife was talking about making a merch out of your ass? And then he's gonna be like, what? And then he's gonna be like, okay, don't do that. 
You just gotta, you just, yeah, you just gotta let me quick, okay? Cause then, that, this, this whole idea is all gone. Say you will only sell it through your Discord, what the hell? <laughs> That's so much worse. I will, I'll keep you guys updated, okay? Just, just be patient with me. I will do my best. As, as a fan of Ryan. I love it when he becomes Mario. His name's Mario, and he bounces on the shells. Some of these levels are hotter than the, hotter than the hells. And when he spins, he can survive a spiny shell. Mario, Rio, please do better, please do well. <laughs> 